Hello and welcome to the Cisco DevNet channel. Today we continue our video series highlighting the latest cloud security API features. In today's episode, we will be diving into how to programmatically manage API keys content together with Yaron Kaspi, API product manager at Cisco. Hi, Yaron. Hi, Alexei. Thanks for having me. And yeah, just as you mentioned, um, in, in one of those previous videos, we showed how you could manage your API keys in our user interface, in our dashboard. But you can also manage our API keys programmatically, to your point, right? So you can do all of the key management lifecycle using APIs. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you have a large number of API keys. Maybe you have multiple teams. Um, that, that require multiple credentials, each with very specifically defined API scopes, right? So that you can restrict them to the things that they need to do and not anything beyond that. And maybe you also want to manage your uh, creation of those API credentials and their expiration and pretty much anything else that you can do inside of the user interface, but programmatically in order to automate the process. So just like you have your API keys, and by the way, the following applies both to secure access and to umbrella. It's exactly the same mechanism. Um, you've got your API keys, and for each of those keys, you have all of your different settings. You have your scopes, your access scopes. Well, you also have these key admin keys. And with a key admin key like this one, you can manage your API keys. In this case, I can list them, create new ones, and update existing keys. So let me show you how you would use that key, right? Because once you create it, you basically, basically get your API key and you get your API secret. I'm going to share my terminal. All right. OK. And without going into too much detail in terms of the actual request, um, you can see it's just a call to api.ssc.cisco.com calling the token endpoint with our key and our secret. And that is going to give us, as we learned before, our access token. With this access token, we'll be able to actually uh, interact with the API itself. So. Let's do something really simple. Let's basically create an API key. So the structure is going to be exactly the same, right? API SSE Cisco.com. We're going to go to the admin group and we're going to use API keys. We're going to take our access token from before and close it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add another header for the application type, right? This is JSON. And you can see in the payload, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the key a name and we're gonna give the key an array of the scopes that it needs. In this case, we're asking for aggre uh, report aggregations and we're asking for the ability to write to the roaming computers, which is underneath deployments. All right, let's hit enter. Great, we got a successful response, right? Here's our new API key. Here's its ID. You can see that it's got a client ID. You know, just like when we created the token, it had a client ID and it has a client secret. That's our secret. You can see when it was created, modified and so on and so forth, as well as the list of its different scopes. Another thing that we can do, uh, we saw that we also had the permission um, in order to be able to list our keys. So what we can do is we can just make a GET request here. And I'm going to use JQ in order to parse this through. But this is just basically going to give me a list of my API keys. You can see here I have a whole bunch of these different API keys. All right, and now let's go back to the UI. And I'll show you our key that was just created. See, API key name was just created right now. 
And you can see that it has the two scopes that we gave it, right? Reports aggregation, read, and deployments from computers, read and write. All right. So hopefully this video was uh, useful for you. Some of our larger customers use this, especially when they have, as I mentioned, large amounts of API keys, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, right? Because that way you can strictly provision them based upon the different use cases that you have. Um, and, and then you can manage their lifecycle management, uh, make sure that they expire when they need to or refresh when they need to. Um, but you can do all of that by scripting it through and building it in programmatically. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing this here, Ron. Bye.